Hello, everybody. This is Stephen Tatillo, editor in chief of Kotaku. I don't know how often I'm going to be streaming games here, but I figured, why not stream today with this graphically intensive behemoth of a video game I've got on my Nintendo Switch? I could be streaming all these other games, Dead Cells. Uh, we're going to actually stream that tomorrow. I got all these games on my Nintendo Switch, but um, Picross, that's the one I picked for today because I yeah, Picross is pretty fun puzzle game and they make a ton of them and I wanted to give people a look at this because we get questions sometimes people saying what is the deal with this there's so many of them coming out and I figured we'd uh, we'd get into it so you know as people wander into the old Kotaka room I'll start playing and talking through how this works so Picross is the word is an amalgamation of picture and crossword and it is basically that you are filling out cells and you are drawing a picture in the process um, and we are relatively early in the game, so the puzzles, puzzle grid is not huge, but it's, um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, put that there, that there, uh, and I'll explain a little bit of how I play this and what's cool about it and all that as we go along, um, but, oh, here's a good one right here. That one goes there. Okay. Oh, ah, this goes here. That goes there. Uh, put an X over there. Two space. Hmm. Oh, over here. X that out. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. And this goes here and that goes there. And bit by bit, I am filling out my picture here. One, two, three, four, space, one, two, three. Oh, we can do this whole row. Boom. All right. Mix that out. Fill that out there. That goes there. Uh, not playing with the blue numbers, somebody asks me. I think by blue numbers... Uh, Laffer over there in the chat, you're asking me if uh, I'm using the things where it basically tells you if your line is correct or not. I play with all of the support off because I played enough Picross um, that I think I know what I'm doing well enough that I don't need that help. But let's see. Famous last words. Hmm. Oh, obvious move right there. And here. So we got that figured out. And what are we doing? We don't know. We don't know that one. Don't know that one. One, two, three, four, five, two. Oh, do that. Oh, that's good. Okay. This goes there. We don't know if that's the two or the one. I'll talk a little more through what I'm doing once uh, once a few more folks show up. But oh yeah, I see. Laffer saying that it's useful. The blue indicates hey, you can do something with this line because basically this is all. You don't go all willy-nilly here when you're playing Picross. You actually strategize out. Um, it, you use logic, the power of logic, to figure out exactly where to make your next move. Actually, I don't know if I can do that one right because this is one space, one, two. No, that actually is it. Um, <clears throat> three, four, five. So that goes there. And we don't know where that goes. Five, five. Lock that out over there. That goes there. Folks, we're drawing a picture. Playing Picross S2 on the Nintendo Switch. And this is just a warm-up puzzle here for me before I talk you all through this. I am Stephen Totillo, by the way, editor-in-chief of this very website, Kotaku. Not of, the, of Twitch. I did not, I'm not the editor-in-chief of Twitch. Oh, God help us, right? Okay. Oh, we know this. So we can X that out. Do that. We can do that. Oh, two there. One there. We're good. 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 Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Get that out. And we are just about done. What do you think that is, everybody? Uh, a rose? Lemon. Lemon tea. Lemon tea. Yeah, uh, sure. One of the puzzles of Picross is figuring out what in the world the puzzle is actually supposed to look like. Because even when you have it done, 
it is not exactly uh, not exactly clear what it's what it's all about. Uh, but here we go. Okay, so Picross S2 came out last week. It is the second Picross game on the Nintendo Switch. Um, Picross S was the first one. There were a lot of Picross games on the 3DS. There was Picross E uh, through E2, E3, E4, E5, all the way to E8. Um, and there have been Picross games on, say, the DS. I don't know if there were Game Boy Advance Picross games. May not, may not have been. It might have started with DS. There's been some Zelda Picross. There's, I think, like a Majora's Mask uh, Picross that was only like a Nintendo, um, like Club Nintendo reward. And there have been Pokemon Picross. There's Picross 3D where you're chiseling your way into blocks. Those are really cool. Um, this one has a story mode, and we're going to look at what the story mode is here um, in a little bit. But um, uh, basic Picross is what you just saw me doing, which is filling out grids and uh, doing one uh, kind of row at a time. Mega Picross is something I introduced many Picrosses ago, and you see that three with the circle around it, so or the, the blob around it, that's what indicates Mega Picross. But actually, um, you know what? Let me let me back out of this for a sec, and we are just gonna go into, uh, we did the warm-up puzzle, and we're gonna now just go into a very basic game of Picross, just to get everybody on the same page here about how this all works. So we're gonna start with this one here. You're already seeing the solution, but whatever. Okay, so five by five grid. So what is Picross, how does Picross work? Picross has numbers on the sides of the rows and the tops of the columns, and it's telling you how many uh, blocks should be filled out in each row or column. And so you know that three of these five need to have um, need to be filled out, and you can either put a thing in, take a thing out, or they have this thing, or you can exit, or you can have a, like a maybe or something like that. Okay. So what we know is that if there's supposed to be three in here, it's going to be one, two, three, right? Or it's going to be one, two, three, or it's going to be one, two, three, right? So what we do know for sure is that that one has a spot in it. Okay. Now we also know from the co that column that this column has to be three and then a space, then one. Well, we didn't even need to have started off to know that that column has to be like that. And by the way, then that aligns logically down there. So we're in good shape. Now we know that this row has three individual pixels filled out, and we know that there can't be anything next to them. So we can put X's next to them. And that then tells us that to get one, 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 we have to do this. Now look at that. This column could only have two. And so the two is already filled out, so you're good there. We know, we still don't know exactly uh, necessarily, with, uh, those of you who played know that we already know, but uh, humor me. Um, we don't know exactly which of these should be the three, but we know that if it's going to be one, two, three, or if it's going to be one, two, three, it's going to have to be that one as well. So we have that a little more filled out. And then look at this column. We know that if there's going to be two at the bottom, it's going to have to be this one and the one above it. So that's the two. And this is how you do it. So, right, you, you see once the thing is grayed out, it's telling you there's nothing more to do, and you solve your puzzle, and then you're clear. So uh, that's the basics of basic Picross. Then if you go to Mega Picross, which is something, like I said, they introduced a few games ago, and we wind up with something slightly more complicated. So we'll do this puzzle here. And what this is telling us is that um, there's going to be an individual one somewhere in this column. It's going to be an individual one somewhere in this column. But then there's going to be a cluster of three that will span these two columns. So it could be like a two with a one above it or it could be a two with a one below it. We don't exactly know. Um, but it's not that hard to figure out on the most basic level. So we know about the three right there. And we know that we can isolate that to go like that. And that already tells us since this bottom is two and two, and we would have known this anyway, that we can go two and two like that. Okay. Um, we also know that this one has to be by itself, so we X that. We know this one has to have a second one, so we go like that. And now we know a lot about the three. And now we also know the blob of three, aforementioned blob of three, here it is. Which means we have to isolate it from everything else, because if we put a pixel there, then that would be a blob of four, right? And that would, that's not what the puzzle's telling us, so we do an X there instead. And they have all the helper th stuff here that tells you this. There's a lot more you can have in terms of helper systems and penalty systems in terms of if you get a thing wrong, it'll I think it'll automatically fill in the correct answer for you instead. But I tend to not play with any of that stuff on because you can figure most of this out just through the power of logic. There's always somewhere to go. You don't even need to usually hold sort of in your mind two possible outcomes and, and figure it out um, because you're going to just you know see it anyway so this is so we know that we can x this out so we're good there um so now we go x, x there or dot dot there whatever and then that's it we're through. so um uh 
Handy Andy 58 is asking if you can play, play this with touch controls. Unfortunately, um, I don't know and I can't tell you because my system is currently docked. So in order for me to stream. So if I took this out, I wouldn't be streaming. So I'm not, I'm not sure. I mean, I find it to be very efficient to play with uh, the, the, the control stick and buttons. But I do play in handheld mode. Um, I just haven't bothered to, to tap things. So this is what's um, this is what's new. So um, you do you clip pick cross state has been described sort of as a story mode. How in the world it serves as a story mode, I don't really get yet. But I'm going to show you what I have figured out so far. So clip pick cross involves solving a whole bunch of puzzles. The only ones I can solve right now are the ones with the question marks in it, and I've earned the right to solve these by finishing off rows in regular Picross, rows of puzzles. So like five puzzles or whatever it was. And then it says, aha, you can now do one more of the panels and clip Picross. And when you solve them all, you get an illustration. You can see actually the white outlines there that are showing some of this. And you know, you got to stand really far back away from your screen to be able to discern what in the world this is. But <laughs> this is supposedly uh, and you, I guess it, it's good when they, they scrunch it down there on the bottom left of the screen. Ash-covered girl, okay? So, I mean, I'm guessing we're doing the Cinderella story here, and I'm going to have, like, multiple panels, and we're going to, I don't know, she's going to go from being ash-covered to being the princess of the ball or whatever, and glass, glass slipper and all that stuff. So, like I said, I, I've earned the opportunity to fill out these other ones, and then these are just more Picross puzzles. So, um... Here we go into one of these, and let's start. Oops, I don't mean to use that. And let's start solving this puzzle and see what we can we can figure out. Okay, all right. Um, three goes here. That goes there. That's there. That's there. Okay, everybody's keeping up with me, right? You're following my my brain patterns here as I, oops, did not mean to do that. It's actually definitely an X. Uh, oh, that's, we know that's that. If, uh, if this is not making sense, I don't blame you. Um, because I'm realizing as I play this, that this probably, people are like, what in the world are you doing? If you've not played Picross before, how are you figuring this out? How are you so good at Picross? That's what you're all thinking, right? So 54 seconds, no sweat on that. Um, but yeah, oh, we we've got a uh, we've got the one and only Mike Fahey in the Twitch chat asking people to hold his beer as he as he confirms there's no touch stuff. So we have opened up a small piece of the the drawing, and we can do bigger pieces as well. So uh, I don't I don't think that's that exciting to do though. So we're gonna just go back into regular old Picross here, and we're gonna solve some puzzles and maybe talk some folks through exactly how one approaches puzzles like this because I think people might find it interesting. So what you're doing when you start one of these puzzles is you're looking for big numbers. So we got a 10 by 10 grid. Where do you even begin? And um, one of the folks in the chat before was mentioning that you can have it so that, and in fact, I could just show you the option here. You can have it so that if you um, highlight correct lines, highlight incorrect lines, uh, I think it's, that's the one. There's a thing where it'll automatically throw a hint in, but there's various things that'll sort of hint what you can do. Uh, and I don't like any of that stuff, so I turn all that off. So we look for the biggest number. Now we know that these are this is, these columns are 10 tall, so the nines are good news for us, because it means that no matter what, these eight blocks in each of these columns are going to have to be filled out, because nine can only fit by going from the top all the way just short of the bottom, or from the bottom just short of the top. And so you're often thinking in this way of what are the possible, what, what is the, the part of this numerical clue that I can confirm? And so we can confirm that eight of these, right? And then we want to always build off of that. So we know that if this is going to be a one and then a six, we know that that means that these two have to be part of the six. So we know that three, four, five, we know that one, two, three, four, five, that if these two were part of the six, the six was either going to end here or was going to end here, right? So we know that the rest of that goes that far. And we know in the process of that, that oh, well, we can apply that, the, that logic here as well. So we know that a four, this is part of a quartet of, of pixels, and it could only, it could either terminate here at the edge or here. We know this one is a three. So what we don't know is if the three goes this way or if it goes this way, but we know that the rest of the row isn't being used. We have that same amount of knowledge here, 
Here we have the same as that one six that was above, so we do that. Here we have that same knowledge, but all the way out to seven, so it's gonna be one longer. Same deal here. Here we don't know about the three. Um, there's some other stuff we know though, and I'll show you in a second what we know. And here we don't really know anything. Now the other thing you can figure out is if they give you a number, and it's not a huge number, but the number next to it is big enough that you're pretty much talking about every pixel that's in the row, you've got the whole row figured out. So in this case, six has to have a space between it, so think of that as one, and then three, well, six plus one plus three is 10. So we actually have been told the entire arrangement of this row. And so we could have started here and just drawn out the six, x, and then the three. What we know now on the on the right-hand column is that the one, this must represent the one, right? This can't represent part of the five because if it was part of the five, we couldn't add a one pixel on its own at the bottom. So instead, we are going to isolate that. Now, what do we know about where the five goes? We know that the five could start all the way up here, and if so, it would end at the green line. But we know that if the five started all the way down there, it would go one, two, three, four, five. So we see three possible uh, three cells that would be sh uh, filled out no matter what, so we fill those out. Now that's told us everything about the four, so that row, so we fill that out. Everything about the three, we fill that out. The four, we fill that out. So we actu actually have more information here as well. So we've got that column figured out. We've got this figured out over here, so we've got that section done too. And we still don't know about our nines, but we're figuring out more and more as we go along. We know that this, these two are part of a six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So the six has to go at least to here. And we know that it can't go any further than here. So we X that out. If you just apply rigorous logic to working through a Picross puzzle, this is how every one of them goes, no matter how small they are or how big they are. In this case, by the way, down here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So X that out and then fill that in. And, um, <laughs> Oh, we can isolate the three here because we know about that. And that's telling us more about where this four is placed. Okay, so now we know about that nine, so that's figured out. And that means we know about the six. Just like solving any sort of board game puzzle or whatever, it's helpful when you get edge pieces because then you can work off of those. So anytime I get anything like that, I'm gonna sort of work off the whatever logic I can apply to the, uh, the pieces that are on the edge. We do the, this over here and we're good. And we block that out. So we are, this is, uh, okay, so this is, and there may be another way to solve this, but so this is the type of kind of conundrum you would often find yourself in when you're solving a pick cross puzzle is that uh, you look at just the first column here and you're pondering between, okay, I have a, I know there's a three down there. This is part of a three, but where does my one go? And you could say, well, oh, I, it must go up here, right? Because, you know, sure. But you think, oh, actually though, the one pixel could go right there, that could be an X, then that could be the three, and you don't know. So you're often hoping for some other clue. In this case, we've got the clue. You look at this row here, and clearly the one goes there, so figure that out. You know in this row there needs to be room for two, so that's gonna go there. And we know that, uh, oh, we're done with this column here, we're done with this here, and we know this has to be part of a two. We're done there. That's that. And we've cleared it. Five minutes and 12 seconds. And we have solved our... Oh, that's that's a catfish? That's a catfish, everybody. I mean... I Some of these I sort of get. Like that totem pole, I get that. Um, Shumai dumplings, okay. Okay, ukulele, sure. But... How is, that's sort of like the catfish whisker there on the bottom right, I think, but I'm not really sure. Uh, okay, so let's go to something much more advanced, shall we? Let's go all the way over. Okay, 15 by 15 with no hands. Let's do this. Okay, who is this? We'll see how this goes. Okay, so now might be more amusing because I might start screwing up. Um, okay. So, um, let's work off of this. There's a big, nice big number there, a nine. So we go one, two, space. So this is what we're doing. We're doing the, the thought experiment of 
What would happen if everything was in this column, the 2-9 column, was shoved as, ver uh, as high up as possible? What we know in the other direction is that if it was as low as possible, the 9 would extend all the way till one short of the green line, right? Okay, so what we're looking for is where the 9 is going to overlap if we come down. So we go 1, 2, space, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's what we can be sure of. Because if the 9 is as far down as possible, it goes there. If it goes up there, uh, if it starts from the top, then, you know, it's going to have to hit at least those squares. So what else do we know? What has this taught us? Um, well, <clears throat> excuse me, it's shown us here that uh, this is a 4-3 row, and we know that this has to be part of the 4 because it can't be part of the 3 because if the 4 was 1, 2, 3, 4, isolated from it, well, there wouldn't be room for it to be isolated for it. So we can actually X that out if that helps us at all. We know that... Um, that the six at least has this here, but we don't really know it much. Let's work on this 10 and one over here. I hope this puzzle isn't gonna to be too, uh, too tedious to solve over the course of the, of the stream here, but I think we can get through it. Um, somebody's asking in the chat though, um, small grid picks are always a bit of a stretch. Yes, handy Andy, I agree with you. I love Picross, but yes, yeah, sometimes you stare and wonder. Do these games also have the hard mode variation of the puzzles like Pokemon Picross did? I played a lot of Pokemon Picross, uh, movement, moo? Moomin. Oh, like Tove Johnson Moomin? Moomin McBirds? Um, but I, I'm, I'm sure I butchered uh, her name um, of, of Tova. Tova. Tuva. Tuva is how you say it. The lady who's the cartoonist behind Moomin. Um, sorry, tangent to a tangent. But I, I played a lot of Pokemon Picross, but now I can't remember what the, um, the hard mode variation was. But uh, if you want to remind me in the chat and talk about it, we can talk about it. So let's do the 10 and 1 here, though. So we know that if this 10 started all the way on to the left, then it would go over to here. So if we go to 1 here, space... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Um, and what else are we figuring out in the process of this? So we know that this five could be shoved all the way over there. We know that. Okay. And if one, two, three, four, space, one, two, three, four, five. We don't know anything else about that. Okay. If this was a three, one, two, three, space, one, two, three, four, five, six, we don't have any good information there. I think the two and the eight should be good for us, though. So let's do the two and the eight. So we know that if the eight started all the way on the right, it would come out all the way till here, right? It would be these five, and then it would be these three, and then space one, two. So if we go this way, one, two, space, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So... Um, we know that the 4 could start as low as here. It's going to have to include this, but it could start as high as here. So it's definitely going to at least include that. Now, what does that tell us? So we add a little bit to our 10. That's exciting because now 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. The 10 could only extend that far over so we can X that out there. Okay. It'd be great if there was like some big fat number we were trying to place in this column, and, but all we're trying to place is a 2 and a 1, so that's kind of useless. Um, what else we got? What else we got? Oh, the 4. You want things that are going to total up to something big. No pressure. Oh, so, oh, oh, oh this is good. Um, I think this is good. Oh, yeah. So this is telling us, we know this is, this is part of the four, but we know it needs room to have a one below it. So that's great. So then we do this. And then we do this, and then we do that. Okay, that actually told us a whole lot of information. So that's a real, that's a real key thing. So now we know the six is going to be um, part of the, part of this. One, two, three, four, five, six. We can X and X there, or one, two, three, four, five, six, and we can X and X there. So we've figured out at least a tiny little bit of that. We can't figure out anything more with the two and the two there. But does that give us any other information that we can work with? Not really, because the six, we don't know, that it would be nice to know that these were part of the six together in this row, but we don't know that because the six could be over here and that could be a space. So we still have that problem. Um, this is like the slow, slow start as we look for things. Okay, can we fit the two and the five over here? One, two, space, one, two, three, four, five. No, so this is great. Okay, so we know the five has to live over here. Um, one, two, space, yeah, and the, yeah, and the two out, and two and the five have to be on different sides of this X. So we know one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we know at least what the central three will be. 
And this has given us a slight bit more information. It now tells us that the four is going to, if it started as low as this, it would be, it would use those pieces, but we don't really know much more about that. And we know that this will be good. So we know that the six is gonna use these five, but we don't know if it'll go all the way down there or up here. But what we also know is that we can X all that out. Yay! And that helps us because here we have, in this row, we have a, we need to fit a one and a five, and we cannot fit the five to the right of that, nor can we fit the three, nor can we fit the four. And in fact, we've probably got some good stuff going on in this row because we've got 12 slots and we have nine pixels to fill and a gap in between 10. So um, <clears throat> excuse me, if we do one, two, three, four, we imagine all shoved all the way to the right and a space, then one, two, three, four, five. And if we shove, shove it all the way to the left, one, two, three, four, five, space, one, two, three, four. So we actually know that if the four was shoved as far to the left as possible, it would still have to include those two spots right there, right? But then you could have it in there and then break and then go to the five. So that's good because that tells us that this thing here, which is part of the four, and this thing, which is part of the two in this column, that's it. So the rest of that is X'd out. Um, again, it would be nice if there were some big numbers that we would then were determining couldn't fit in this upper right quadrant, but we don't know that. Um, we know, what else do we know? What else do we know? Um, oh, well, this is interesting. So we, we have some information here on this pixel, these pixels and these pixels here. And what we can do to figure out how to connect them is probably the next order of business. So Dragon Hero is talking about loving the, the bigger puzzles and how they start slow. Yeah, you know, it's a weird metaphor and many of you are probably too young for this, but you ever like buy a CD back in the day as in shrink wrap? You know how long it would take to finally find that damn edge to tear it off with your fingertip? But then once you did, sort of like the whole thing comes right off. Or I mean, I guess think of any package, like a tightly wrapped like gift or something like that. Um, and it's just like this very slow beginning to things. And then you can... Um, you can basically figure that, you know, sort of rip the whole thing apart. I don't know about any Mega, mega Picross and 3D Picross. I've, I've, you know, I was like dying for Picross 3D2 to finally come out on the, the 3DS. I finally did, and then shamefully I did not play um, all of it. So I actually don't know. I don't recall if there's a Mega thing. So let's figure out the 6 and the 3, though, here. Um, so what I think what we can figure out is that these are going to have to be, this guy and this guy are going to be connected because this here is going to need to be part of the 3 and it can't reach anything else. So we know that these these things are part of that. Um, so we don't really know how, f we, we could imagine that the three is this one, this one, this one, and that that's a space, but we can't be sure that that's a space because that could be part of the six because it could be one, two, three, starting with the first one we have filled out in the row, we'll give you one, two, three, four, five, six, and ending there. So we don't really know any of that. But we do know that these guys here are connected. And since we are now determined that the pixels on the right are part of the three, we know that, and we know these are parts over six, then we can X out these over here because they couldn't be part of the six. So again, we've gotten a tiny bit more information. We still don't know if say like the one and the six here are related. We did get make a lot of progress in figuring out the 10 and the one. In fact, I think I see a big breakthrough we can make here. Um, we need room for there to be a one on the right, and this big clump is part of the 10, right? So we know that has to be the one. We know that has to be the X. And in fact, I had already filled out the 10 pixels. Duh. So there we go on that. Um, so we're in good shape there. We know this is part of the three, which is great. So that means we can X that out. We can X all this out. And anything else? Oh, okay. So we can X out the two there. Um, but we don't know anything more that we can do in regards to that. And now we're looking at um, we're looking at what else we can do around here, folks. Um, I've never really talked publicly about my uh, my love of playing Picross, and I'd like to think I'm decent at it. But I'm sure there's people who can speed run this way faster than I am. Uh, if you have if you have your own tips that you want to share about how to best play Picross, I knew I couldn't fit a three there, which is why I X that out. Feel free to share them. Uh, maybe even have some advice from me. Maybe I'm maybe all these optimal strategies I think I'm employing are not in fact the optimal strategies. And you know of something that I don't know about, I'd love to hear about it. I do know that we need to be able to fit a four here. And that the way to do that is to um, at least assume that these two are part of it and then work off, off of that. I also know that this is part of, clearly this is part of the six, which means that anything below it has to be part of the six, so we can fill that out right there. And that means that this one, two, three, four, five, oh, I guess, but we can't, still can't assume where this goes, right? Can we? Oh, no, we can't because we know that the three can't go any further than that. So I think we can X these out. Let's think this through. 
five in the row. So the six is ending here or here. So that could be a piece. Um, but the, these guys being part of the three means that over here, that's an X and that's an X. And that, oh, this is great because then that means we can do the four down there. That means we know that that's part of the six, which means that we can X these two out over here. And we know that uh, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, we could have done that anyway, that we could have X that out. Um, we know the four here doesn't need that. Okay. Oh, so we know more about that. Great. Oh, this is good. This is good. Good stuff. Good stuff. Okay. So just need one more pixel on the bottom there. This actually shoves our nine and two up one more. Um, the fourth, some uh, PD, P. Duffman um, is recommending I go to tackle the 431 column. Uh, yeah, you're right, because this over here is a three, and there's no way that could be part of the four, so that is part of itself, the three, so we can do that. And then I don't think we can go and do anything else with that there, but this is, gr this is great news, and this is a great tip, because one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, we can get the eight all the way over there. And um, uh, I saw that, I saw Ubiles is saying this game is infuriating to watch. It's fun to play, though, that's the thing. It's fun to play. And I'm, you know, I'm trying to go as fast and expeditiously as I can. I'm still explaining what in the world I'm thinking. Oh, this is good. Let me fill this out. Uh, okay. Oh, we got, we got that. Okay, this row is done. So you see, you know, we're, bit by bit, we're making progress. We're get, we're getting stuff figured out. Um, the company that makes these is called Jupiter. Uh, I think sometimes people, folks think that Nintendo themselves makes these. They um, they publish them, and you don't see much or any Picross on other platforms. But um, this is a, it's an independent company. I don't really know anything about them other than they seem to be able to churn out Picross games like nobody's business. Um, can we do this whole row here now? No, because the five... We know, let's say, one space, one, two, three, four, five... So we know that's part of the four. Okay. We don't know. Could that be part of a two? Yeah, it could be. Okay, but we do know that. Uh, that's good. One, two, three. Oh, so that has to be that has to be the two. This guy right here, right? One, two, three, four. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So X that out. So does that tell us the six here? Okay. And then block that out for that. All right. Oh, look at that. You can kind of just paint the X's over, so you just hold the button down, and then uh, and then you go through. Ooh, Biles, you're you're shouting at your screen about the moves that I could be making. I'm making all I'm making all kinds of moves. I'm making all kinds of moves. Look at this. Uh, I thought I I thought I was all right at Picross. Maybe I'm not. Publix is gonna gonna tell me. I don't think I've made a wrong move yet, though. Give me that. Give me that credit. Uh, look at this. Look at this. Any theories on what we're drawing here, by the way, folks? Let's hear some theories. Let's see. Let's, let's see if you can figure out. If you're a true Picross expert, by now you've figured out exactly what we are drawing. And you're gonna tell me in the chat what it is. We're gonna see. You're gonna put your name to it. As you say to the public, to all, all the people watching this, somebody's telling me about the 313 column. Uh, yeah, we're, we're good on that. We're good, we're good on that. I'm working my way up. The other thing is, um, as, you guys, as you guys are watching and as I'm playing, you think about it, my eye is in one part of the screen, and so I'm like, I'm, I'm working through that area. And it, I, I imagine, I never, never actually tried, whoops, I've never tried playing uh, Picross games with other folks before but i imagine that you know if you have multiple people you can monitor different areas of the board and see different things develop um which has got to be helpful we're about done we got any uh, eggplant or shrimp or, or the theories here i think uh i think uh think uh, yeah it's kind of like a tongue maybe or something not really sure I'm not really sure what's going on. Um, let's oh, let's wrap this up. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. Oh, well, that's eight, eight, nine. So then the space, and then okay, all right. Uh, wait, oh my God, where is this part of the two? Right? Yeah. 
optimize the top three. X that out, X that out. Oh, that's going to have to be the one. Almost done. worried about making a mistake in the last second and I know I shouldn't because come on 1525 eggplant yeah congratulations to Omer me who who predicted eggplant and yeah there is a oh I got some yeah so that was um there's a lot of pick cross puzzles in this game Lots, and I. So one of my kind of issues w on w with uh, yeah, kind of, let's see. one of my issues with this is just the with Picross in general is that I feel like it does kind of plateau at a certain level because they never really do ask you to sort of hold. Like I was saying earlier in the stream, they never ask you to hold more than one possibility in your your mind at the time. They do give you ways to mark that up, but it's not really that necessary, and so you can just slowly steadily play through these and they, they can be certainly enjoyable and I like you know finding out what I'm drawing and all that stuff but I find that actually that it's almost like the more they released Picross games the more it kind of took the magic away from me or like, I'm like oh yeah these are kind of just you know they can just be designed by I don't, I don't say designed by machines I guess that's I guess that is what I was about to say but they can also be played by machines right because it's just sort of ruthless logic and so I find myself actually wishing for the drawings that I was creating in these to be a little more exciting or, you know, tied to cool stuff. Because without that, it just feels like I'm just drawing random, random, random blotches that they then, you know, say what they look like. So I, this is my roundabout way of saying that I really wish that they put out the, um, uh, what you, what you call it, the, uh, the Zelda thing. To more pe for, for more people to be able to play because I was really into the idea of solving some, uh, creating some Zelda illustrations or solving Zelda illustrations when I was playing the game one. Let's be, um, and uh, yeah, they didn't, they didn't put it out. Three, four, five. So this is, we're back in Clip Picross and I guess this will be how we end things. Uh, thank everybody for tuning in as I solve this last puzzle in front of you and hopefully don't screw it up at the last minute. But this is uh, Picross S2 and it is part of this long-running uh, and quite enjoyable series that is on Nintendo platforms. Tons of these on the 3DS if you have a 3DS and you're looking to play something um, and sort of satisfy that puzzle-solving itch, then I would recommend it. I just don't go so far as to you know feel like you have to play all of them or anything like that. They, they tend to blur together. They tend to, for the most part, from what I've seen, pick up the mechanics from one release that are worth retaining and putting into the next and do so. And others, if you disagree, there's a lot of Picross fans in the chat. Um, if you disagree and you want to sort of argue for certain games, if like Picross E6 is some hidden gem, uh, you know, I would love to know that too. But they kind of blurred together and what I've found is that there's just, there's not, whoops, butterfingers on that. There's just not a need to play exhaustively every Picross game ever um, in order you know, to like avoid missing things out or whatever. I guess this is a five. Okay. But uh, yeah, so we got the, we got Picross S2. Um, uh, yeah, Mario's Picross 2, M Mario Picross 2 never came out in the U.S. Um, and yeah, the, some of the, the later 3DS ones uh, people are talking about. Yeah, there's there's ones, that, there was a Picross, right, where you could, you're actually making parts of a larger illustration, which I guess is what you were doing here as well. But as you can see, not, not exactly very satisfying, the, these parts of it that I'm making. I think maybe Picross 3D2, uh, again, some of you are experts in the chat are going to be able to say this better than I, or, or recall this better than I can. I think Picross 3D2 had you creating or sort of chiseling away and creating things that became part of a larger thing. I'm vaguely recalling like a parade float or train or something like that. Um, I enjoy the 
what you're creating in the in the 3D games or what you're what you're uncovering more so. Look at <laughs> look at the progress I'm making in Cliff Picross. Great, I have this weird like a, is that a sail on a sailboat? I don't know what that is, but you can see in the bottom left it's actually something else that looks like it's maybe some sort of gold brick wall or something like that. But I, I'm 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 thinking this is a. Uh, We've got the um, Cinderella story being done here. But that's Picross S2, everybody. So thank you for tuning in for that. If you're interested in playing it yourself, you can get it on the Nintendo Switch. It's nine bucks. There's also Picross S, which is the predecessor. It does not have the story mode, but otherwise it's full of puzzles as well. This has regular Picross, Mega Picross, and Clip Picross. Um, there's no safer bet that you can make in life than the fact that Jupiter will probably make a Picross S3 at some point. I don't know what will be in it. Um, and if we're lucky, they'll do another 3D game because those are those have been really fun and I think far less explored um, and you know sort of creatively experimented with uh, by Jupiter for the Nintendo platforms or for any platform um, compared to the the 2D stuff, which you can basically get a new one of these um, quite frequently. But um, folks, I need to get up from my seat and go to another computer in here in the Kotaka Recording Studio to turn off the stream. Thank you for joining, and we will be back with more streaming. We're trying to hit 1 p.m. just about every weekday. Um, have mercy on us. We're probably going to be skipping Thursdays as we just do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday to look for more games streamed. You can see a schedule on our Twitch page. So thanks for checking this out. Have a good one, everybody. Bye-bye.